give Ray. Hello, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my talk show. I'm your host, That One Rebel, as it says right here. Oh, wow. Whoa. How am I supposed to fit all of you in such Skilia, a time? Skilia, thank you so much space. for the raid. I appreciate that. Thank you. What, a, what an interesting time. We're literally about to start the, the interview here. I appreciate it for that fat ass raid. Thank you, thank you. But uh, my name is That One Rebel, and uh, welcome to my show, Late Night Rebel. And uh, hopefully you have a good time here. And if you haven't already, hit that follow button. But also, if any questions for myself or for our guest, Ray, please use the command in the chat, estimation point questions. That's with an S. It's also in the stream title, if you ever forget or don't know. Basically, just type in your um, name and also your question, and we'll take those in about an hour or so. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce our guests coming from behind the curtains. Ray! Woo! Hello, hello, welcome, Vray. How are you doing? Hello, hello. So, just a reminder for anyone's curious or doesn't know, Vray is a mute. So, that closed captions that you will see at the bottom of the screen is uh, what Vray is uh, actively speaking in real time. And obviously there's gonna be a, like, you know, a few second delay and also it might not be 100% accurate, but uh, we'll do the best we can. But anyway, so Vray, how, how are you doing today? Are you doing great? Are you excited? Are you nervous? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it, of course. And I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So my first question that I have for you, we're going to start with very basic questions and we'll start ramping it up. So my first question I have for you is, how did you discover VR chat? Did you start in desktop or VR? And uh, when was this? I discovered VR chat originally, maybe something like four years ago, watching uh, Lyric. But never got into it or uh, thought about playing it until about maybe two years ago. I saw, so I used to follow Rob, Rafflegator. Okay. When they uh, played Overwatch, I don't know, years uh, ago or five or six. I'm not good. That was with a while ago. And happened to see him playing VR chat one day, somewhere around. Okay. Like two and a half years ago. And that got me kind of interested in it. I thought uh, as a lobby it looked like a lot of fun. To see everyone having fun. Really interesting and decided that I would give VR chat a try. Okay. So I originally started on the Oculus Rift, the first uh, consumer version, like the really old one, not the desk. Oh, you mean like the CV1? It was a very basic one. It was not very good. Ara, ara. That's when I started. I really liked uh, dancing, even in half body. So yeah, I noticed everyone dancing, I got really jealous, and then I just packed up the Oculus, and I decided to wait until I bought an, an Index and Trackers. Okay, that's quite the start. So obviously, to recap here, um, basically talked about how you started watching Lyric when he played VRChat, and that is, that is factual, I was there that day 
when Lyric did play VR chat. That was a long time ago. He played like two or three times. That was because of um, Poke or Pokelols, who was like, I would arguably say one of the founding fathers uh, of VR chat streaming, in quotations. And um, and uh, Lyric got interested into um, VR chat because of Poke. And then Poke would be like the tour guide, and then Lyric would stream VR chat. And yet, I don't know how many viewers at that point. Three, 30,000? Who knows? I don't know. It was a lot of people, um, obviously. It was a lot, of, a lot of fun, obviously, you know, for him to explore VR chat. And obviously, you were watching Lyric, and you're like, what the heck is this game? What's with all these, like, anime characters and stuff? And then, um, and then obviously, you didn't get into the game until much later when you're watching Rob doing VR chat stuff. It actually didn't capture my interest at, at the time, but that would have been my first interaction to it, yes. And then you came like two years later when watching Rob doing um, uh, his lobby, the Golden Gator. And then you're like, dude, this is sick. I want to be a part of this. Awesome. So I'm just going to recap every time you say something so everyone's understanding and also the people in the, in the audience understand as well just in case thanks sounds good awesome so my next question is um tell me the first time you got into vr chat or a funny story that I remember that from your early adventures so i'll tell you a funny story when i first started i didn't have any friends of course i just uh go to Publix. And usually I would dance in front of the mirrors. This was after. Oh, wow. How am I supposed to fit all of you in such a tight little space? Uh, so after I got the uh, index <laughs> and trackers, not on the Oculus, that has been maybe six months later once I finally got full body and index because I didn't play for those six months. I just quit until I got the index. And I would just dance pretty much for 12 hours a day. Yo, Pink Knight, thanks for the raid. I appreciate that. Uh, and then I was, uh, I'll be asleep to get up and get back on. I was totally addicted for the few, first few months. Within the first maybe month or of playing, I was in a midnight rooftop. And uh, I was just dancing in front of a mirror as usual. And a big group of people, seven or eight people, approached me. Asked me if I would like to come onto a game show. Uh, because they wanted unmute representative on their show, and after some convincing, I said, "Why?" I said, "Sure, why not?" I went to it, and it was uh, a lot of events. Like there was like mutual raids, not really new trades, just a raise, but you had to be muted for them. Obviously, there was also like a questionnaire portion, and there was. Uh, talent portion which I dance for uh, maybe I don't know I, I don't know the contestants and I end up winning the whole event oh snap you won the whole thing that's kind of sick and the whole thing event this was a long time ago so this was when I was really excited about just being in a competition like that, like it was streamed. Uh, I think it was literally like three viewers. The stream was very small. But it was a fun time. And this was unrelated to like the Golden Gate. This is like a different lobby. This is like something else. Nothing to do with the Gator. This is just another group of friends. Interesting. That's an interesting story. Like you were just chilling and then they're just sort of were like, hey, come with us. I forgot they were called because I think, oh yeah, the Virgin Squad. That's what they were called. What the fuck? Yo, yo, what up guys? It's Virgin Squad here. Back at it again. Going them in that rooftop. Yo, with this rewrite girl. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, come on down to our uh, talent show. You know, competition. Yo, you got a talent. All right, let's see you dance. Sheesh. You know what I'm saying? Goddamn, she got the moves. More like cringe squad, but that's honestly quite funny. A lot of self-deprecating humor. 
I mean, I'm just role playing as if that's basically what they were kind of like. That's what it sounds like. I mean, if you're gonna call yourself the Virgin Squad, I mean, shit. <laughs> Interesting. I've never met these people before, but I believe something like that could happen. Absolutely. Very interesting people out there. But the thing is that you won the whole thing. Do you think? Do you think somewhere out there there's like a vod of this secretly a recording, and they're like, "Oh shit, this is what Ray was like back in the day." Yeah, I was the only full body mute. Most of them were half body. Uh, there could be a recording. Okay. I had no idea. I have to dig for it. Okay. So everybody was half body. I mean, you can't. I mean, you can dance and have. I mean, I'm half body. It's because you can't see my legs, but it's just kind of like, hey, what's going on? You know? <laughs> so I mean, full body is gonna beat out any half body. You know. Uh, there's three or four half body also for the teleport. You didn't have to dance. Some people did like a comedy bit. I mean, comedy can go really poorly or really well. You know, went up and screamed as loud as she could. Her talent was screaming really loud. Was it Amory? No, damn. You do anything you wanted. Uh, and these people knew. And you just no like new users. Okay. I haven't really played a lot of VRChat. Most of them probably quit by now. That's just kind of the thing. I don't think they're like big in VRChat. A uh, big in VRChat communities kind of thing. Yeah, I mean there there's a lot of like like really random things you'll you'll encounter in vr chat like that was just one of them like you literally get sucked into this like weird like talent show competition type thing and like nobody was streaming it barely like there's no like real viewership it was just people like fucking around having fun i mean that that's a lot like you, you got to think about it just for a second everybody in the chat everybody in the audience just think about this for a second and take it in uh, there's probably what 60,000 people playing this game right now probably give or take right maybe half of them request these whatever right? who cares the point is that there's probably some crazy things going on right now like competition singing talented people people doing backflips people modeling making crazy ass animations all this cool stuff and you'll probably never see 99 percent of it unless they happen to be streaming or recording and that's something that a lot of people don't understand is that like Technically speaking, when you stream VR chat or like when you watch a streamer, you're only really seeing like 0.1% of the game. Like, honestly, like you could spend your whole life trying to browse VR chat and try to like go to publics or events and you truly won't, you know, experience all of it. So when you, when you obviously explain this story, I believe it because I've had moments like that where I was off stream and like you get sucked into like this, like, almost like uh, it's a different world it's just like dude all these people are like just hanging out having a fun time and like nobody's streaming or barely even streaming and it's just like this stuff happens all the time it's almost like a fever dream it pretty much was very rare very random but it did turn out to be a lot of fun yeah exactly so my next question here is uh for you Vray was what was the first thing you did when you got into VR or and or full, full body? Was it exclusively dancing or was there something else that you did when you first got into VR? Like, were you like, holy shit. I guess I did technically answer this. First thing I did was Dan Steven. Dude, I love Dan Steven. You mean dance. Was dance even though in half body and that was once I got full body, all I did was dance even more. I guess after a while, I did get into the whole sign language community. You know, shout out to the sign language community. And I did get very, very involved in it. To the point that I did it for almost eight months or so. So I even uh, helped run a fairly sized Discord uh, classes, coordinate teacher. Coordinate teachers and lessons and things like that and really did enjoy my time learning sign language. Damn, that's dedicated. Yo, shout out to Ray for helping out doing sign language classes and being a teacher for eight months. It's helping out some... Can we get some claps in the chat? Can we get some hearts for Ray? Like that... Yeah, think about that. They... they 
that's like a selfish act. Like they did that. They helped people out. Like, you know, they're out oh, helping God. people out. I still to this day like to inspire people to learn sign language. I think it's a great skill. I think it's a lot of uh, fun to learn. And I'm by no means a teacher at all. All I can really do is guide people. That's what I meant. Yeah, guide people. Uh, because they're very adamant about who, who can teach and stuff. Uh, guide people, inspire them. I can hear here and there, but exactly. They're pretty much strict on all the whole teacher thing. Oh yeah, we won't we won't go too far into it, but yes, they are. Uh, only certain elected people can uh, be teachers who are qualified. I'm still very much a student, despite uh, the amount I know. There's always a lot more to learn. Yeah, what a legend. Okay. Next question I have here. What is something you miss about VR chat when you first started playing that doesn't happen anymore? So when you first got into VR chat, um, something happened or something that used to be pretty regular now that doesn't happen anymore in 2022. Is, is there anything that you miss? Well, I guess, I don't know if this is the right way to answer the question, considering I don't know if VR chat has changed very much or my circumstances have, like for example, I don't really dance anymore. It's very rare that I dance now. I'm very sad right now hearing that or reading that. I don't really actively learn ASL anymore. I don't really go to Publix. I don't really try to meet new people. And I'm already uh, inuated with a lot of friends or in, like, in a lot of friends groups is what you're trying to say and a lot of basic stuff I'm on VR chat and it's because I have something to do somewhere to go people like to be around it's not likely that I get to like hop around on randomly and go and meet strangers and make friends and go to Publix the days of going around and randomly meeting new people are kind of over which you know there's certainly some Something about being being liking you and anonymous does keep things fresh and it's fun. It's something that I do, I guess I do miss a bit. So meeting new people and uh, dancing. I mean, we can fix the dancing part, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, just dance, just dance streams, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, that part we can fix. That's pretty easy. I've never been really good at dancing. I just enjoy it. Uh, I just enjoy that. It's just for fun. Well, absolutely. I can't dance for shit, but you know, it's listen. I'll, I would say as long as you're not a body shaker, which is where you like do like the one, two step. You know what I mean? You remember like, you remember like back in high school where you see like the person go like, do, 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 like this, like they're literally like this. Do, 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 do. Like as long as you're not dancing like that, you're already, uh, you know, ahead of the curve. You're already like better than 95% of people in VR chat, you know? I would say if you can at least do a, do a hip shake or like, you know, do like a belly roll or something like that and do some like hip sways, you know what I'm saying? You, you're already ahead of the curve, you know? I kind of groove out with the music. That's what I'm saying. I can't dance for shit, but I got some of the boomer moves when I get the full body on. You know, just play some classics from the 80s, and you know, I'm just like, you know, it, you know, we all, we all got moves, you know, I'm sure, right, you got, you can bust a move, I'm sure, I'm sure if you really tried, and people would appreciate, just have fun with it, okay, this isn't a competition, you're not like sign up to be like in a dance competition, so, as long as you're having fun, that's what really matters, and that's, that goes to anybody out there watching, listening, just do it for fun, fuck the haters, you know, as much as I love this avatar, it doesn't really have, doesn't dance very well. I usually use a different one if I'm going to dance. No, that's understandable. Like some avatars um, are not good with, with full body or what people have now is like the chest tracker and the elbow tracker. Because if I use that on this avatar, my avatar like turns into like a gremlin. So um, uh, some avatars are made specifically for the chest tracking and like the, the more trackers and full body and stuff like that. So I, I understand that. 80s are the best? That's right, Groovy Tuesday. You're right. 
So the next question is, uh, how did you create your uh, OC, your character, you know? How, how did you create where the avatar that represents yourself here, Vray? So I did have an avatar before this that was an OC. And I used that for a long time. And we've been around the time I was heavily into the sign communities. However, not long after I joined the Gator lobby, I'm at the point uh, that I was very sick of my old avatar. I wanted a new one, something a little bit more up to date. And I started off by uh, looking for a face that I wanted, which took a long time until I found this one. I found the face that I like. I basically built the rest of my avatar around it using assets that I could find and buy online. Like Gumroad, for example. So I would search uh, thoroughly. As, as far as uh, as far as a bunch of discords uh, that a bunch of that a man like a creator like an avatar creator discord I would find assets so every single that I'm uh, wearing the hair the ears the clothes the jewelry everything is just a set or a bunch of assets that I bought separately and then had put together by a very close friend of mine named uh, how do you pronounce that Yali I pronounce I, I apologize if I had pronounced that wrong who is very kind and very talented. You know, shout out, shout out to them. Sick. And then changes since then, like making the hair color blonde, the top white. I did the nails. A new texture and everyone will help. Uh, from our friend named Bree or Brill. Change all the facial expressions, fix the physics bones. A lot of work done since it was created by Yelly, okay. From with the assets that I found. I would say even even if um you know you can't get like an like an OC OC and you just sort of what's what you just described as like kit bashing where you're basically taking a bunch of assets and then you're kind of putting them together, I still think that's very valid. And you should never feel discredited because, oh, I didn't spend $3,000 on an OC and I don't own every single aspect of this avatar. I didn't get like a sketch made and an artist and I have someone custom make every single asset on the avatar. All these av assets on this avatar are free or pre-made and then fitted to this base. This base uh, even is quite a popular Tory base. Because you can customize a base and kind of shape it to however you like. And we can uh, fit all the clothing and assets to it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's what bases are for. And I, I never... You should never bash someone for using a base or using a, a Gumroad or a booth model. Like, for example, I had a friend yesterday talking to me off stream. And uh, she spent... Uh, she bought, like, this really nice booth model and then customize all the textures and everything. And you could even tell that what it was originally because she just heavily modified it. Um, and, you know, she basically made it like, kind of like her own OC, you know? Uh, get their own avatars? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, never feel down. Like, I, I would say what you uh, edited here and how your friends helped you is a solid avatar. And you can always think about in the future, you can always go up from here. You know, you can be like, you know, maybe in six months, maybe later down this year or next year, I'll get that from scratch model and I'll have like the dream avatar that I've always wanted. So no one will ever say, well, that's just a Tory base. And then you can be like, yo, bitch, this is my OC. you be like, look at my nails. Look at my hand ASMR. What are you going to say now? I don't necessarily want a from scratch avatar as long as it's an avatar that we could still unique and no one else has this avatar. They have to somehow piece it together, all these assets, which isn't impossible, it's highly unlikely. Oh yeah, I mean, if you don't want to sketch or a from scratch model, you can also just heavily modify it to the point where you couldn't even tell what it was originally. Like the, the tongue and the teeth. Eventually I wanted to change these uh, to something a little more up to date because this is a very old face despite 
uh, the rest of the assets being a lot newer. I obviously want to get more outfits to it, but I don't have any type of plans for redoing this avatar from scratch. Okay, yeah, like if you want to just like update the face, um, you know, the teeth, the blend shape, stuff like that. Yeah, that, that, that's perfectly okay. I mean, like you said, as long as it's... Um, like you said, like as long as it, you could tell that it's you like if, if i could go to a club and there's 60 people and i didn't have nameplates on and i could say that's Vray without even seeing your nameplate and tell with just by your avatar i think that's mission accomplished um you know because i've always said this before like there's nothing wrong with buying uh you know gumroad pre-built avatar or anything like that but it does get you know i'm sure a lot of people in my chat or in the audience can agree Sometimes people buy an avatar and then they don't edit it and it becomes like the Clone Wars, like strip from Star Wars, where you get like 50 people that have the same avatar and they didn't edit it. And all they did was maybe make the hair red. Another person has like a blue hair and another person has black hair. I didn't really want to do that. That's why I kind of went this route instead. The Godfall avatars. <laughs> This does is the different assets all pieced together. It's not like you can just buy this avatar somewhere. That's right. You have to kit bash all this to put together. This be a T-Rex? True. And you never really know uh, the shape keys and proportions that use the gestures I made myself. The custom textures, things like that. That'd be impossible to reproduce. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, uh, like Godfall is an example, but I was thinking more along the lines of Gideon, my dude Gideon. His uh, the Operator Twenty Nine. You've probably seen uh, very popular all over. Very nice guy. He's my friend. But I do see a lot of people using that base, but they don't change anything. They kind of just buy it and then that's it. Same thing with Blubble Man's avatar. I'm sure a lot of you guys have also seen Blubble Man. Again, a very popular base. But I have like 1,900 friends in VR chat. And I went to a party, I shit you not, I saw 10 of the same avatar. It's like, literally the same avatar. One was just green hair, one was blue hair, one had big booba, small booba. Like, that was the only difference, man. It, it was like, is this like a multiverse? It's like, it's like going to a VR chat public and you have like 10 different Spider-Man, you know? Spider-Man, whatever, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the same thing. I have no interest in ever doing that. Uh, uh, besides a few edits, it wasn't for me. I just uh, it didn't needed to be a bit more custom. Yeah, so I uh, just my own little like uh, add on to what you were saying about like your avatar and then you know people that buy avatars and stuff like that. Like I said, there's no issues in buying it. It's just that I think if you want to buy a, like an avatar or base, please please edit it because it's sometimes uh, you know jarring where it's just like that spider-man meme where it's just like hey wait you're not spider-man i'm spider-man you know what i mean it's like that meme where the the two spider people spider mans are fucking pointing at each other it's like that i don't really blame people for buying one that's already been made for you yeah it's like 40 bucks or so i just think all i'm asking is that um, just customize you know make it a little more you can have a nice base just customize it maybe put your own outfits on it put your own spin on it you know because and I'm, this is a very minority group of people that do this but there's people that buy a gumroad avatar then they say this is my OC and I'm like no you bought that and it looks like everybody else like what do you mean you can't just buy an avatar <laughs> And then not change it, and then just say, this is my OC. Uh, what? You know, if you edit it like Vray did, where you kit bash it and change it and make something out of it, you know what I mean? Because, like, I don't know, I just feel like, I understand that not everybody knows how to make avatars and has money, but I think you have to put a little more effort into just, oh, I found this public avatar, this is my OC now. I think OC is the wrong word because it's literally original content and it's very obviously not. Well, that's what I mean. That's that's why I always question these people and I say that's not an OC. OC means original character. You can technically brand yourself as this public avatar. 
Yes, I'm looking at my time. I have 30 minutes. <clears throat> it's not original. I'm just choosing to represent myself or brand myself. Well, yeah, I mean, like, well, some of these people will, like, say, well, this is my original character, and then they start streaming, but they just bought an avatar, and then they even ask the, the permission of the avatar author to even use it for commercial rights. So it gets into this really weird situation. You won't see two Vray Rays at a party, that's true. That's tricky. I mean, this is also doesn't happen too often. This is a very, like, niche, very minority group of people. But I do meet people like that. I'm always kind of like, you know, like the, what's like the Pepe, like, think or whatever. I'm like, huh, you know, like, really now? That's an OC? I'm pretty sure I've seen that on <laughs> Pure Chat like 200 times. So, anyway. The next question is, uh, well, how'd you come up with the name V-Ray? What, is there a story behind this? Or Vray, sorry. Honestly, I don't have a really interesting story to tell you about my name. I come up with a lot of names in the past. I like, I like short names. Uh, three or four letters. And usually what I'll do is I'll start with a letter. I like, in this case, V. And I know I wanted to, you know, three or four characters for a long time. It was Ray. So, name is so good, she said it twice. That's true. I don't have any story behind it per se, it's just the name that I came up with using letters and sounds that I liked basically. Ara, ara. Okay, I'm just curious. If there was if there was a story behind it. Um, so my next question is, how did you discover Rob's Lobby, the Golden Gator? Obviously, you did answer a little bit by saying you watched him, but, you know, how did you get in, I guess, I guess to answer it, how did you get involved into the lobby? Interesting thing is I used to follow Rob a long time ago playing Overwatch, and I found it funny that I happened to randomly see him in VR chat one day. I uh, never saw that coming. I also never had any plan to get into the lobby. I used to just uh, watch him because I enjoyed the streams, though it was fun. thought it was fun, but I got into VR chat and I very much did my own thing. I would dance. Like they got in ASL. A second life. But I never was really thinking about the Gator lobby or in, in, uh, being a part of it myself until I met a few people. Uh, from it, one of the first people I met from the lobby was Kyokuru, or Kyo, and uh, because I used to dance in their lobby, we would just get together and dance often, not on stream or anything like that. Just sometimes they would stream like this kind of band circle where everybody would just walk in a circle and they'd do in the middle of the dance and then go back to the edge of the circle. Oh, you mean ciphering? That's what that means, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know what, what Vray just described, it's where um, you have a dance circle, and then one person goes into the middle, does a dance for a little bit, steps back out. That's that's what a cipher is, or ciphering. After a while of knowing Kyo, uh, hanging out with something, or sorry, is hanging out. Sometimes they joined Lazzy. A Lazzy's lobby called the campgrounds. You know, shout out to the campgrounds. Which uh, were were back then, but then I joined uh, Kyo, found myself, and this very pretty map called the campgrounds. And that's where a lot of cool people there. I got to meet a bunch of people. Yeah, the first night I went... Lazzy sent me a friend request. Welcome you uh, to come back anytime. And so over time, I would just sort of come by, say hello. I started meeting more and more people until eventually I got, you know, the I got to know the ASL community eventually died out. The one that I was hanging out 
took my time to hanging out with my friends in the campgrounds. I became like my home. That was like where I would go, hang out with my friends, not just the campgrounds, but also just the random weekday weekdays uh, lobbies as well until I was with friends. Basically, everyone who was a regular there th for the campgrounds, I didn't meet a lot of people from the Gator Lobby because uh, the campgrounds has a lot of crossover from a lot of different, uh, a lot of different people. From the shrine, getting me a lot of variety of people for like a crossroads for our communities. Eventually, I met someone named XCon Sniper. Oh yes. Okay. They are someone who I spent a lot of time with, got to know very well. Eventually, we did get to talking about becoming a mute and talker partner. Where? Which? After deciding he would do it, eventually he did approach me at the subject of joining the lobby to do RP with him, things like that. And at this point, I've done some new cams with them, mute cams with them. We played a lot of games together, that kind of thing. So he did get me added by the Gator bot and Murder Crumpet. And so they could join the lobby. It's because back then, uh, uh, Crumpet was the one who was running all the lobby and not Rob, as far as invites go, anyway. And of course, now they all go for Rob. Back then, they had to go for Crumpet. Yes, so back in the day, originally was Rob, like years ago. And then, then, it, then Crumpet would run the lobby because Rob would get, you know busy with other things and you can't sit there and you know accept invites and then and then use the bot and now i think they just use the and then it just goes for rob again yeah so that's uh so i guess that's basically how i ended up getting into the golden gator lobby obviously i made a lot of friends in there and they're very welcome and very friendly And a lot of my best friends these days are still to this day, still a lot from the pant grounds. But definitely the majority uh, these days would be Gator Lobby. So that's kind of, I guess, my new home. Going from the ASL community, campgrounds, Gator, Obviously, I would like to get involved in all three of those, but I don't really have the time. Unfortunately, you do kind of get slotted into these things as time goes on, and I don't like to. I don't get to go to the campgrounds nearly as often as I like to anymore. Sag. I like to anymore. I'm pretty much just stuck with streaming gator lobbies and then. Make a poor attempt to try to hang out with friends. Which is difficult. Uh, to say the least. Yeah, Lazzy, Lazzy the Ladder. <laughs> I can't even see the straight face. <laughs> Lazzy the Ladder, it's true, it's true. It's not even a meme. So, what you're saying is... People would go to the campgrounds. They'd be good friends of Lazzy, you know, butter them up, sweet talk them up, or mute talk them up. And then they would go from the Lazzy, climb that ladder, and then go to the Golden Gator lobby. Is that what you're trying to say? Let's just say it's happened enough times now that there's a certain pattern. Okay. That a certain people at this point now, you know, you can go to the campgrounds from the gator lobby and from there, uh, if you friend the right people or a certain amount of people, that kind of thing, there's a chance of getting into the lobby depending on what happens. 
So I think there's something that people sort of... I'm not going to name names, but I'm sure some people kind of got their own way, that goal in mind. Let's just say that. Oh, absolutely. I think there's multiple ladders to climb. I don't think it's just Lazzy. I think the same could be said for a lot of other streamers. Like, people, like, I'm sure there, there's probably a meme about, like, Crumpet. When Crumpet goes literally to Publix, you know? You gotta climb, you know? I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Yeah, I'm exposing Lazzy now. I still think of one of the best ways to recruit people is in Publix. But obviously, if we're realistic, a lot of those people are very aware of who Crump is. And the fact that they can... That they that they can shoot their shot or that they can shoot their shot to get into the lobby all that kind of stuff it's not it's no different really <laughs> it's like i'm deleting my account i'm closing the camp forever <laughs> listen lazy everybody watching i'll tell you a, a mini story Okay, everybody, everybody's a ladder, even myself. Okay, I might not seem it, but back when I was a part of Team Five, I was I was seen as a ladder to climb because obviously I was friends of Poke and Whoops and Vince. A lot of these names people may not remember because this is a long time ago, but these people were the largest VR chat streamers at the time. Poke having like ten thousand viewers, uh, Whoops having like two or three thousand, and Vince and all them. It's the same thing. That was four and a half years ago. And obviously I was a much smaller content creator, but I was still part of like the group essentially. So I remember, and I'm not joking or exaggerating, I would get maybe 50 or 60 friend requests every single day. Cause obviously I was, you know, hanging out with the boys. I was hanging out with Poke and the boys of team five. And because I was on his stream, obviously you see the nameplate and people would just <laughs> gotta, gotta add, gotta add. And um, I, I deleted all these people. I, I remember there was, this was back then where there wasn't an, like an auto delete, like all friend requests. So I had to go for each one and actually click no, no, no to like every single one. It took me about an hour or so. Cause I had like 400, 500. Um, so that reminded me of the Rob friend list chat update incident. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. Adding rebel right now, <laughs> that's right. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's how it was, you know, all these years ago. And I'll never forget, again, another very short story. Um, this involves Lyric. I told this story before, but um, on my own stream. But to, to reiterate, basically, when Lyric was playing VR chat, he had like 30,000 viewers, and uh, Poke was showing um, Lyric around VR chat, and I was a part of that sort of tour guide group. And... Um, Lyric started streaming, and this is like a week after like the tour of Poke, and then Lyric just randomly got into VR chat again uh, near the end of uh, December of 2017, and uh, he logged on, and I was just sitting in the I think it was like MMD Dance Club or some shit like that, and basically I was just talking, and then I was like, why am I lagging? Because like so many people started filtering in, and then everyone's like, Lyric's here, Lyric's here. I'm just like, okay, like whatever. And then um, Lyric saw me because I was using my my avatar because I stuck out a sore thumb because I was the, the the Kenny model from The Walking Dead. And he was like, "Oh, yo, you're the guy from uh, Pokes Lobby. Hey, you you want to like hang out for a bit?" And out of forty stream snipers that were all around us, he was the only one to add me. And we were hanging out, and um, and then immediately after Lyric added me, this is where the ladder climbing part came to it. And it basically, I would get immediately within 24 hours probably 20 to 30 dms on discord on my twitter i even had a guy straight up like join off of me like two hours later past this and was like hey man um so hey rebel i saw that uh saw that lyric added you bro um in vr chat you think you can uh you know invite him here and uh you know you know introduce me I was like, what the, I was kind of like, are you serious? Like, what the, f I was like, what is this, dude? And here's the, here's like the cream of the crop or like the, the best part of this story is that Lyric got on again and uh, Lyric joined off of me because I was just like a friend's plus. He's like, oh, hey, what's up, Rebel? What, what's, what are you doing? And I was like, gonna 
a map doing like baseball or some shit. I don't know, whatever. And uh, the guy comes, joins off of me, the stream sniper guy that wanted to meet Lyric, joins off of us, and and then he immediately runs up to Lyric. He's like, "Yo, Lyric, I got a I got a funny joke for you." And then Lyric just points like this and just blocks him like that. And just says, yeah, I don't want to hear that shit. Get the fuck out of here. And I never laughed so hard in my fucking life, dude. Guy who spent so much time trying to stream snipe and immediately gets blocked. Immediately gets eviscerated. Gets Thanos snapped out of the map. So, I, so I know how it feels, uh, Lazzy and other people, how it feels to, to feel like a ladder to be climbed. Fun fact, Lurk to this day is still probably my favorite streamer. Like the one I, I watch probably the most. Outside of your chat. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say Lyric's like that comfy streamer. You can just watch any point in time. It doesn't matter what he's doing. You're just sitting there watching along for the ride, you know? Also, people wouldn't expect this one, but I also watch a lot of K3 Soju because I. Oh, this is like a TFT streamer? Oh, I wouldn't know who they are, but okay. Uh, I enjoy playing. Uh, TFT when I get the chance, yeah? Oh, okay. Not Vray's favorite streamer? Damn. <laughs> He's super zoomer streamer? <laughs> and I'm definitely not a zoomer? Oh yeah, we're boomers. That's for sure. For some reason I still enjoy it. Anyway. My next question here is, uh, do you have a favorite mute adventure you went on with the Golden Gator crew? Or with Rob specifically? Adventure, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to have done really good with anything to do with favorites. Right now, controller freak out. That's okay. I've always had many different times, like I always enjoyed. Uh, the lobbies where we don't really have plans and we just go and explore random worlds, any worlds, and play random games. Um, I always enjoyed playing Ghost with them. Oh, you mean the VR track game mode Ghost? I thought you meant like Phasmophobia. You mean like the actual Ghost, where like you get the guns, you, get, you collect the money, and you know there's like a a ghost. Specifically, the Ghost where you have like a guilty pleasure. I, I, I can't help but I just, I just enjoy it. Seems like uh, Prison Escape, things like that, enjoy like that most than anything. I don't really have a specific night that's my favorite. Or anything like that. Okay, it just means you, you really enjoy hanging out, being in the company with, with, with your homies. You know, and you like hanging out and playing these game modes. You like playing... Ghost? Okay, if you guys want to know how to get to uh, uh, Ray's heart, you gotta play Ghost with Ray and some Prison Escape. Yes. Take notes, take notes. Any notes takers? What's up, Jufa? How you doing? Ara, ara. I also like all the other games we play as well, and can't remember uh, the names of them. I like the one where you have the two questions. Oh, uh, Wavelength? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Can't remember, it's okay. Freeze tag, all that stuff, wavelengths. It's fun as well. There's also a drawing game. Yeah, the draw, quick draw, which is basically just Scriblio. Yeah, the drawing one is super fun. I think that's like one of the top. That's one of the top games that have come out in recent times, is the quick draw one. It's so fun. All right, next question I have is, um, how did you get into the hand ASMR for streaming? How did you get into, you know, or where's the camera? Like this, you know what I'm saying? I'm not zoomed in, but you know what I'm saying. How'd you get into the hand ASMR? Ara, ara. Well, so I shouldn't really... To say, so I did it for years and years. Too well, two years, I guess I should say. Just with friends. If you... If you ever seen me at the campgrounds, for example, you would probably have seen me doing hand ASMR to people. It was all just something that I enjoy, regardless of anything to do with streams, because back then I didn't really think about streaming. I always kind of did the things that, sorry, I always kind of wanted to stream, but I always figured there's no real point. I would just go live, have zero viewers. 
you know, why bother, so I never really got into streaming or anything. But I... Uh, I did it, still regardless of that, just enjoy doing handsome art for people, funny enough. It doesn't do very much for me, it does something for me, or it doesn't really... It doesn't really do things for me if, if someone's doing it for me. I don't really have any kind of a phantom sense, you know. I don't feel a lot of the same ASMR tingles and things like that. I get what you're trying to say. Like, to you, it doesn't do anything, but to everybody else, it does. And you don't really have phantom sense. Involved. Mentioned feeling audio or visual, yes, is still nice. Like, it feels nice. It's relaxing. That's far as it goes for me. So I pretty much, so I pretty much prefer to do it to others, particularly when I can tell they're enjoying it. You got the hypno hands. It, it's a, it's a blessing, you know. I make people feel really nice and, and relaxed and comfortable, even without doing hand ASMR. I always just enjoy trying to be like a positive influence on people uh, around me. It's kind of like a bad mood. Uh, sorry, sometimes in a bad, bad mood. I want to be able to try to hide it from people. I want to bring them to some ASMR and hand ASMR is just a way for me to try to cheer people up. Make them feel nice and cozy and comfy, comfortable, and just positive vibes. It's kind of my end goal. Uh, as for streaming, there are a few people who really did push me to stream, like main two would be XCon and Rob. And of course, was telling me to stream for a long time. He helped me get a great deal. Helped me a great deal getting things set up. I still had a lot of self-doubt, but he was a big motivator and a lot of help. It helped me uh, and do a lot of positive stuff. Try to. List very good uh, friend of mine. Rob was probably the influence to be as far as I can my stream content. Yeah, we're gonna give you some hearts and some claps in the chat for Rob, AK Rafflegator, aka Robert Malecki, the 18 inch beast. <laughs> Towards the ASMR stuff. Like almost literally said word for word, just stream doing hand ASMR in front of a camera playing comfy lo-fi music. And that's exactly what I do. So, so he basically told me just do that, it'll work. And I guess he was right. He just knows, it just works. He was right, plus it's just something I enjoy doing. So it just works out very nicely. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're doing something you enjoy, like, naturally, you'll, you, like you said, you, you want to have comfy vibes, you want to, like, calm people down, and if someone's having a bad day, you're just giving them some hand ASMR, and it makes them feel good, and you happen to be doing that as a hobby, and you just did it anyway, way before that you are streaming, that just proves that you're a <laughs> genuine person, that you actually enjoy doing that, and then, you know, you happen to, you know, have someone like Rob and XCon help you out, and sort of... Uh, fix that self-doubt to be like, hey, I want to do, I want to stream, but then Rob's like, hey, just do like the ASMR thing. You do it anyway. You enjoy what you do. You know, just have some comfy vibes. And now look at you, you know. You're doing incredible, doing amazing. You know, I'm pretty sure you're, you're on the fast track to, you know, I don't know if, if you care about getting partnered, but, you know, maybe you will get that soon. You don't get that partner badge. And maybe you'll change your name from Ray, Ray, Ray to just Ray, you know what I'm saying? Much more effective is something I want to do, yes. Get the name, change. To just Ray. It's more effective to be able to to give hand ASMR to hundreds of people at once instead of one person at a time. That's true. I mean, you can always just say, yo, tier three sub, and I'll give you a personal hand ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you tier three sub, you know you get a you get a personal hand ASMR right now for the next sixty seconds. Everybody else watching, not for you. This is literally just for you, dog. I actually do have a two hundred fifty k channel point redeem for someone to come into the VR chat and get ten minutes of hand ASMR. 
All right, I gotta start AFKing, yo. Bro, I need to get these points, yo. Get some gambas, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I need to get some... I need to get a quarter of a million right now. Shit. There's a few people in my chat that are specifically saving for that redeem. Uh, they're specifically saving for that. They're nearly like 200k points now. Oh, snap. Oh! You know what you could do? You need to... You need to record like YouTube videos and then like have like that special like ear mic and then like do a 360 video. You know those 360 VR videos on like YouTube where like you're in the headset and you can like look around. It's like a 360 YouTube video. Oh my, imagine doing that, but it's just Ray like doing this. Holy shit. I'm telling you, you'll be like number, you'll be a millionaire. You'll be a millionaire for a year. Everybody will be like, holy shit, dude. I want the Ray. 360 videos on YouTube. They'd be sitting there, you know, they'd be sitting there in VR and they're like this and they like, just see a giant Ray just like, you know, caressing their face and they're gonna be like, oh my God, tier three sub. Yeah, here's $50, 100 gifted subs. This is the best content I ever seen in my entire life, dude. 360 Ray, I'm down for that. I'll send you your cut later. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> my cuddly, you know what I'm saying? Just business deals out here. Just business, guys. Just, just, just business. Just business. Anyway, wait, hold on. How many? How much time do we have? We have three minutes. Uh, before the ad break, by the way, not the end of the interview. Just a. So I'll ask a, a quick question here. Um. Do you ever get where, sorry, did you ever think you would get where you are today with streaming? Absolutely not, not at all. No, my highest expectations would have been, but I don't know how, uh, I don't know, honestly, I can't say. I didn't expect any of this, just wanted to give it a try. I will say this, I went in streaming after being fairly confident that I could get at least some of yours with what, you know, being on the Gator streams and things like that for a while and building up, you know, at least some f sort of base to start with. With that, was also a sort of big motivator. And so I did get into that with the idea. But if possible, I would like to make that make something that I could do for a living. Uh, this was very much in my mind. Typically, they would always recommend that if you get into streaming, you would just start with the intention of just doing it for fun. Well, absolutely, 100%. Just doing it for fun. Uh, in my case, I did very much that intention of trying to make uh, a real goal of it and make it, make, make, make it, sorry, make a real go of it and make it feel like my primary source of income. I did intentionally have that goal which for better or for worse, still not still not something I recommend doing, but I'm very lucky that it did work out for me because there's nothing I would rather be doing. I certainly didn't expect uh, the level of success, I guess you could say. A lot, yeah. It's certainly far beyond my expectations to see the least, yes. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see the time here. Ooh, perfect. Okay, so it's been an hour since we started. Like I said, every hour Twitch likes to run a bunch of ads. And so I'm gonna purposely take an ad break so that nobody misses anything future of this interview. Killing of rate, absolutely. So I were to take a three minute ad break. So guys, just like so you guys know, I, you will see ads unless you're subscribed, but we're not gonna go anywhere. We're not gonna continue any more questions. We're just gonna chill, you know, get some snackies, get some water. I don't know, take a bathroom break, something like that. So I'm gonna play the ad break now. And uh, I'll see you guys in three minutes. We're just gonna chill here. People in the audience, we get to just chill, hang out, talk about whatever, until this ad breaks over.
But I guess what we could do while we wait three minutes, I don't know what else to do. I'm just going to drink some water, but I guess you could do some hand ASMR. Because there is a special camera. Use the use the handheld camera, dead guy. You click the, the red, and then you click the green. There we go. And then now, now you just zoom it in. Yeah. You don't have to get close to the camera because we can literally just zoom it in. Yeah. Get closer, closer to their hands. Like zoom it in closer. No, you gotta zoom it in. You gotta like press the trigger and then you gotta like use your joystick. Really close. We have to get really close. Like that. Is that good? Yeah, even closer. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, this is good. This is good. This is good. Don't, don't, don't change it from here. Ara, ara. All right, while I do this, I'm going to get some water. One sec. Oh, is the camera backwards? Like it's inverted? So I just got back from getting some water. How much time we have? Okay. Uh, three minute ad breaks over. So you know. All right, all right. Ad breaks over. You guys enjoy that? Yeah, that was a, that was a handheld camera, so that was a, a different camera system that I use for other things. But I wanted to, you know, because you were here and I was getting some water. There's certainly interesting, like I don't think I've ever done something like that before. 
Yeah, yeah. It also was in HD, 60 FPS, 1080p. It was, it was too, it was too high definition. You know, just a bit of, just a different sort of viewpoint, I guess. Yeah, it was, just, it was just a test, just to see how it would work. You seemed to enjoy it. You were like, "Whoa, this is, this is different." The chat was full of comfy modes, so I guess, I guess they enjoyed that. That's cool. Definitely different. Anyway, welcome back everyone from the ad break. Um, we were just doing some comfy uh, ASMR with uh, Ray. For those that actually got to see it, I guess you enjoyed it. If not, I guess you can always just check out the VOD and enjoy some comfy um, hand cam, um, personalized of Ray stuff. ASMR stuff. Anyway, let's get back to these questions here. So my next question is, um, how do you feel about your community currently? As you have grown as a streamer and grown as a, as you know, your stream has grown and your community, how do you feel about that? There's a lot I could say because uh, I feel, I feel extremely lucky to have the community I have. I, I have, that's an understatement. There's really, there really is the amount of kindness and support that I have. And uh, all the great people that I met. Uh, I met uh, everyone that shows up day after day, so many like regulars, so many times people, uh, kind people, it's always a very welcoming place. If someone's new comes in, they're very welcome, very welcomed with open arms, very accepting, very kind. Just extremely, extremely nice community. And beyond what I would have expected from just Twitch in general. Uh, I certainly expected it to be a little more, I guess, I thought there would be a lot more there'd be more trolling but uh, there's a very surprising amount of kind of mature wise and like open-minded people uh, everyone is just so very accepting very open-minded again I don't have enough words on how to describe it because I didn't expect there to be so many people who would be so open to just uh, comfy vibes at the end of the day. It's not like a lot is happening in my streams. It's not like there's some high energy music or dancing or role play. At the end of the day, it's pretty basic. I'm just in front of a camera talking to people. I do have very good conversations with my community, so we get into all kinds of different topics. And uh, we goof around a lot. There is a lot of good humor. In a way, I sort of rely on uh, my chat to bounce off of. There's kind of like, kind of like the co-hosts in a way for the streams. Uh, myself, my stream is a very large part of chat and sorry chat engagement, and I like I typically try to greet everybody everybody that comes in. My chat, I remember if I seen you earlier in the stream, and or not that kind of thing. It's just sorry, my small focus on my screen on my screen. It's chat itself. I obviously do appreciate everyone who just wants to lurk and come in and be comfy and cozy and just enjoy the nice vibes have to come in and engage with me and talk to me all the time by any means i very do much appreciate the people who do because it's very much a part of the streams itself it's just too engaged with the audience and include chat and what's going on on the stream and what's going on around us in the world we often have uh, the visitors. Ara, ara. 
typically being comfy sometimes being a bit goofy that kind of thing i could go on and on about my community there's uh an amazing and i'm just going to leave it at that i think i love my community very much awesome Aww. we love you too we get some hearts in the chat if you got some very Heart emotes, yeah, you can spam them. You got some hearts, less than threes. Papa bless. Did you say sex? Me too. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> oh, let me take a drink. Did my true suspect say sex? Is that why this is happening right now? That's right. It did. Well, sex, heart. I love sex, heart. It's the best part. Anyway. Uh, what's your thoughts on the recent mute shuffle of 2022? Let's get a little spicy questions here. What What's your opinion on the mute shuffle of 2022? Okay, you, no more soft questions. This is we need to get some curveballs up in here. You're looking forward to this question? Oh, me too. I'm on the edge of my seat right now. Do I think in general? The mute shuffle was very successful, very great idea, well executed. Definitely a success. Okay, okay. My personal involvement in the mute shuffle is something that I hold a few regrets for ultimately. The outcome is something that I think was good overall for myself and most people who are involved in it however the execution on my power or on my part could have been better i do have some regrets there i wish that i had been a bit more light-hearted was meant to be a very kind go on go on pause champ very kind of like a funny sort of event uh yeah humorous focus and when it came to the portion with XCon and myself go on it would end up quitting and going separate ways as far as a new partnership goes uh friendship we're still friends i still consider XCon one of my best friends but the speech we all had to write all the meets or mutes <laughs> Did have to write out a speech, and mine was pretty heavy to say the least. I guess I said meets instead of. I, don't worry, I'll, I'll correct it. <clears throat> it's pretty heavily to say the least, which I wish, in retrospective, as sort of toned back down a bit and at least attempted to make a bit funnier and lighthearted. It's not something that X, Con, and I did take the partnership very seriously, so they didn't need to be some sort of a more serious tone. Don't get me wrong. But it could have been done better. That's all. I still consider the event itself today uh, would have been very well executed and overall success. I just have to. I just have some regrets on my own involvement. That's all. That's all I could have done better. That's all. That's why I made it a bit more entertaining for everyone instead of being a bit of a uh, Elmo. Oh, a bit of a <laughs> I said Elmo for a second. I was like, huh? Being a bit of an Elmo, <laughs> but almost like a downer, which is like the polar opposite of what I would like to do. No, we got what you're saying. <laughs> Dude, speech to text. <clears throat> no, I get what you're saying. You don't want to be like a downer. I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase what you're saying. Like, you didn't want to like, you know, because 
I was watching the whole thing. So obviously, I'm not going to name names. <clears throat> Just watch, you know. But essentially, there was many times where it was like a roller coaster of like, there was a lot of up moments and a lot of down moments. There was like moments where it was just like, this is a waste of time. Like, why is this person like, wh what's even happening? It's like mod check. What is happening? Like this, this is like some, huh? What, what, who cares? And then there's also moments where we're like, we're like, oh shit. Oh, <gasps> yo, they're about to split, bro. Oh shit. And like, you know, like someone's running out like a goddamn essay being like, F this person, you're the worst talker, oh my god, what the hell, you don't even see me, blah blah, and I was like, oh sh, oh snap, I was like, oh my god, dude, this is brutal, dude, this person's getting eviscerated, you know, so some of it was like, very, very funny, and then some of it was kind of just like, whoa, what, what wake me up. You know, it, it was kind of like that. It was kind of like a roller coaster. It was a bit all over the place. Yeah, I feel like the way it should be like organized for next year if they do it again is maybe, I guess, try to either speed run the boring ones or just don't even bother or just say yes or no. Cause like, you know what I mean? Like you just, you, don't, you can't have this like 20 minute build up and then it's just like, yeah, we're just gonna stick around. Like I, everything I just said didn't matter. It's like, oh, the, what the fuck is this ending? <laughs> what did it matter? You just blue balled everyone. You just debated everyone. What the hell was that? Or like some of them are kind of like everybody was like, who? Who is this? Who? Who is this talker? And who is this mute? Does this person even come to the lobby? Who is this? Like there, there was a lot of like, who is this person? Like what's happening? I do think there is probably typically just of all people who are currently active in the lobby, not people who are just long gone. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. Like there, there was people that, like I don't show up to the lobby, so I'm not included. But you know what I mean? Like there was, there was people that showed up specifically for the mute shuffle that probably not even that, like probably even like people literally said, I didn't even know they were even in a mute partnership. When did that happen? Like that was said like at least like four or five times during that mute shuffle, and they're like, when is this person, you know? here or have a mute or what what's even happening like who is this person so i think they should just stick to the regulars of the lobby and i guess i don't know but that's what I, that's my only thing because i felt like you know we were waiting like a long time for the good ones they're like oh this is gonna be good and then some of them were like who is this why are they up here for 15 minutes like you know wasting time essentially so, or maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's fucked up to say, but like, you know, just have like a, a lesser day two for like the lesser known characters, you know, <laughs> just like, all right, you're not the main event, you get your own day, you know, <laughs> you get your own side thing, you know, I, I just think that um, some people probably showed up specifically because they knew it was a big event. So they're like, oh shit, this is my time to shine, you know. I'll get, I'll make a big event out of this. And some of them, it kind of left like a, like a, like a wet fart, you know, it was kind of just like, you know, it was just like, why, what's happening? Oh, thank you, Zan. I appreciate that. Uh, certainly could have been some improvements, but that's to be expected though. Yeah. I think, uh, if, yeah. I mean, overall, regardless of the outcome, like regardless of like, oh, like the weird moments, like what, why is this happening? Like resident sleep or move on uh, moments. It still was a good event overall. I think everybody collectively says it was a good event. It was just like, you know, it was just kind of like, you know, these up moments and then these very like plateau, like what's happening, wake me up, skip VOD 20 minutes. Uh, oh, here's the good moment, you know what I mean? like. So if they can sort of reduce those resident sleeper moments, uh, it would be a 10 out of 10 event. They have those moments, so you don't have hives without lows. It's just part of life. It's just the sort of boring moments that make the inside moments just much better in a way. I think the most interesting part 
was the people that debated some people. So what I mean by that was like when at the very end, some people would uh, be like, okay, these are the mutes that don't have a talker partner. And then they would like to have a talker partner. <laughs> and you see like I could go up and then like everyone in the lobby is like, yo, I got to go in. I'm, I'm ready for this one, you know? <laughs> and at the very end, they're like, yeah, I don't want any of you. And I was like, hey, let's go. That was good. Same thing with Mika too. Mika Moonlight, same thing. Ice Ike was based. Oh, absolutely. The same thing with, with Mika Moonlight. Because if you didn't know, I actually interviewed Mika Moonlight just before the mute shuffle, I, and I straight up just told Mika Moonlight on the interview. I said, I said, don't accept any of these people. Make you got to make them work hard for it. Prove. You, they have these talkers have to prove that they are even worthy of being in your presence. That's what I told Amika, and so that's why she. I mean, maybe I, maybe it was all because of me. I don't know, but I'm just saying that's what I told her. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, that's more or less I told her the same thing. A lot of people I tell were telling them to maybe keep playing the field, so to speak. Well, here's the thing. Like, I, I think a lot of the people were just seeing. Mika as like an object of like, wow, that's such a cool person. I just want them as like a, a mute, you know, instead of like getting to actually know them. And I, it, it kind of seemed like really weird behavior, like really like almost like weird, cringy, like, oh, hey, Mika, yo, you can slide in my DMs. You know, they, you know, you can DM me anytime. <laughs> I laugh. That was such a good meme. Yo, yo, you can DM me anytime. My DMs are open. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my god. I started saying that unironically to some people. I was like, hey, just let you know my DMs are open, you know that, right? Freddy, you know my DMs are open, right? <laughs> X-Man? X-Man is a good person, but I think sometimes he doesn't mean to do that, but I just, I just think it happens, you know what I mean? It just happens. Poor X-Man, yeah. Speaking of X-Man, I mean... Rob did save him. He was literally going to lose his mute, and then Rob came in and literally said, like, bro, don't leave this guy, because if you leave him, I feel like tor terrible things are going to happen. He's going to get really sad. So, with, with Zay. Fun fact, is one of my best friends I love. She means the joke came. Yeah, I know. I know the joke came from X Man. The uh, yeah, I slide it or like my DMs are open. Yeah, I was there when that act like the first clip happened, I, and I was when I first saw that, I was like, "Bro, like <laughs> you don't say that. You don't just go up to someone and be like, hey, Ray, you know my DMs are open.' <laughs> my God, that's like playing like a Fallout game or like Skyrim or something. And you pick like the worst option. Anyway. Moving on. Okay, I have some interview etiquette for a moment. I need to turn off this alarm on my phone. Okay. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for turning off your phone. Out of respect. I appreciate it. While you do that, I'm going to take a drink. Hey, everybody stay hydrated. Drink some water. It's good for you. <clears throat> Just some support to the new cute mute Mika. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, my next follow-up question to this is, uh, are you still actively looking for a talker partnership, or are you just kind of like playing the field, you know? That's a real question. That's the question we're all asking ourselves here, Ray. Okay, there are a couple people I have in mind that I would, if asked, probably would be their mute. However, pause champ. For the most part, I am not interested in having another talker and I'm quite enjoy going solo. Damn it, debated. Uh, without the added pressure of having... <laughs> 
a mute and talker our partnership I'm having a mute and talker partnership I typically enjoy being solo but that's not to say there aren't a few people that I would consider if asked okay I'm just you know I'm just, I was just asking. I was just wondering. I was going to be like, oh, you know, puts hands together. You know, what's going on? You know, I'm just saying. <clears throat> I'm just curious, you know. I'm sure everybody in the chat was curious, you know. It is a, it's a valid question to ask, you know, as someone who's on the market, you know, for a pot. Maybe, I don't because I didn't know if you were still looking or not. Do a follow-up question. I agree on the market. I think, like what I said of Mika Moonlight, is that... I think whoever, if you ever do get another talker, you make sure that they work hard for it and that they treat you like a queen, you know? They treat you like you're number one and not the second, not the second rate, you know what I'm saying? You gotta make them work hard for it and make make sure that they damn understand that, that this is a partnership, not a one-sided, this is a two-way street. It's a, they, they gotta work for you and you gotta work for them, you know what I mean? You gotta work together, it's, you know, it's a partnership. This isn't some bullshit, you know, Mute does everything and then the talker just sits there and picks their nose and plays Apex Legends or something or whatever. <laughs> I would make sure that it was very clear with my intentions. Oh, absolutely. And of course, uh, set expectations. RPR and Shample? I didn't say anything about RPR, I just said Apex Legends. What does that have to do with him? I was just saying, in general, that the talker shouldn't be lazy, that's all I'm trying to say. They shouldn't just get a mute and then immediately just be like, ah, fuck it, whatever. Because I'm just saying, in general, since the mute partnership has, what, how long has it been around? Like, two years? Or whatever? There's been people that got mutes and then they just never, like, cared. You know what I mean? Like, they got the partnership and then like never did anything with it. They kind of just like quit VR chat and said, adios amigos. So maybe more definitely more acts are actually, uh, because the whole Rob and Zagger thing was long before I started playing VR chat. Yeah, I was there for that. Don't be a Pokal Arcari. Speak, dude, that, that Lucario one, holy shit. That that was whew, that was a spicy one, and then he and then he just goes with uh, what's her name Q, Qco Q, I think her name is. Yeah, I think it's her name. They, that was that ooh that was a ten out of ten right there. That that was a spicy one. That's a, that's a spicy meatball right there. That's all I'm saying about that. But anyway, let's move on. You know, we'll take we'll take a little a little off the the gas here. You know. But, um, uh, sorry, I'm just looking at my questions here. Uh, do you have any goals uh, at all for this year in terms of streaming, doing your content? Do you have any goals at all, like to get partner, to expand what you do with hand ASMR, to do like VTubing stuff? Most of my goals do include streaming. A lot of them are very general, like expanding my lo-fi music list, adding, uh, sorry, expanding my cozy music music list, adding some more music, more tunes for my stuff and keeping things fresh. Maybe checking up the alerts, but I have chorus and waiting to get partner, which by the way, I've been waiting for over six weeks to hear back. Six weeks, that's uh, what, 40 days or something? I think R rough estimate quick maths seven times six uh, my brain's too uh, I'm too cooked for this <laughs> but anyway point is um, you shouldn't feel too bad because uh, some people waited like two months 42 that's what I was thinking yeah I thought it was 42 but anyway yeah so um I just wasn't 100% sure. I was like 99% sure it was 42. Um, when I got partnered, it took me two attempts, and my second attempt took 
30 something days something like that i forget the first one was like 40 days and then i didn't get it and then the second time was like after a month or something like that and i got it first time i applied was just after the first month of streaming and uh, they didn't respond back saying everything looks good just but was to continue yeah because when you're streaming for like uh just a month like literally you just started streaming twitch is gonna be like yo you've only been streaming for like a month bro well long for your current stats then my stats have exploded from that point so at this point uh my stats are more than good enough well i'll let you on a little secret too so uh, if you didn't know this this was a meme going around in my interviews and in my chats my stuff but there's been a very interesting meme where based not a meme but kind of like a thing where basically i would interview people and then literally within a week they'll get partnered and it's happened not once not twice not three times but about 20 times and i'm not exaggerating that number just so you know in fact it worked for me because what ended up happening was i i interviewed everybody else and they all got partnered then i had jades interview me and then I got partnered a week later. So like, you know, I'm just saying, you know, it, it does work, you know. It, it has like a 90% success rate. So it doesn't happen 100% of the time, but I definitely think that this time around, I, 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 my, I'm, I'm really praying for you. I think you'll get it, right? If not, third time's a charm. That's what I like to say. You never know, maybe right at, maybe the next day, tomorrow, you'll get it. And you'll be like, oh shit, it was Rebel, dude. It was all because of this interview. I would say very likely the next time, let's hope so. And then of course from there, it would be doing things like uh, getting more emotes. Oh, absolutely. Once you get partner, you probably be like, holy shit, I got like 40 slots. What the hell do I do? <laughs> I want to keep updating my avatar with more outfits and things like that. Oh, of course. Like for example, it's summer. You know, you have a swimsuit, but you know, sometimes you gotta have some variety with the swimsuits. You know, you gotta have the beach episode, you gotta have the maid outfit, you gotta have like the comfy, like sweater outfit, you know? You get the name uh, of Ray on, on, on Twitch, exactly made outfit, bikini or something, those are priorities right now. Never came, but it's temporary. Yeah, you showed me it before. Um, so I'm looking to getting a new one finished. It's on the, it's on the way now. up along with a few fixes and updates weight painting issues yeah made ray i'm looking forward to that could you imagine that made ray you need some hand asmr and then also giving you some nice drinks some nice lemonade in this hot summer heat Whew. i'm just saying damn you know what i'm saying I mean, it's getting a little hot in here you know just thinking about it shit you know what i'm saying that will break rob i think it'll break any mortal man <clears throat> bikini mave ray streams wait 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 you gotta mix the two the uh, may bikini made oh sh <sighs> that's too much that's too much that that's too op too op <laughs> oh my god just make sure you're near a, pool, a, a body of water you know you don't want to catch a three-day ban you know what i'm saying yeah right, you're right of course of course Take my credit card. Bunny Girl of Ray would confuse Rob's heart rate. That's uh, hey, that's pretty true, Alteraj. You're, you're pretty right on that one. Listen, all you, all you gotta know is that Ray stonks. <laughs> fucking skyrocketing. Holy shit. I'm just saying, listen, if you don't invest into Ray now, you better do it now. Buy now and sell high. That's what I'm saying, you know? Invest now, gamers. Cause raid stonks are gonna go skyrocketed. You're gonna you're gonna have a, an amazing time if you invest into it right now. Wait, did that say a y g e business? Okay, g e business. Right, Grand Exchange, Runescape. Yes, I love Runescape. No, it's a Twitch email. Oh, oh, emote. Thank you, Chad. You got... Oh, the crump emote. Oh, that's right. It's not enabled? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, I don't have the. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm. I'm a doofus. I don't have every seven TV emote. Uh, I'm a loser. That's okay. That's basically just the crump uh, business email. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we've been going for an hour and a half. Did you know that? That's pretty epic. That's that's crazy. And uh, what's more important is I'd like to take some questions from the chat and our audience. So if anybody has any questions, you can also use the command in the chat, as much as much by questions. Let me check that. Oh, there is three. Sick. All right, let me see these questions here. All right, we'll take these questions. So we'll take these ones first, because these ones have been sitting here probably for an hour or so. Your questions are more of a less an open book. I invested before, even though Lobby, that's what XCon says. I believe it. I mean, Vray did say you were best friends, so I believe it. <clears throat> anyway, so Dragon, who's also in the audience here, asks the question. They say, Vray, you notice the comfy queen, the hand ASMR goddess, been acquiring minds. Want to know when you're going to take that next step, aka fe feet ASMR? What the fuck? Dude, you literally killed her. What the fuck? What this? Qu you literally killed Vray. What, what the fuck kind of? Qu Zoom out! Zoom out the- uh, Zoom out the fucking- Come on! Zo zoom out the camera! She's fucking dead, dude! You a you, you asked this feet ASMR question and she's dead, dude. Literally eviscerated. What did you do? What the fuck? She- It's not even the lobby, dude. You killed her! I blame Dragon, dude. What the hell was that? On real note, I think she just crashed. Don't worry. She'll get back in here in a second. I just like to make it, say it for a dramatic effect. I timed out. I apologize. Oh. That was strange. We get, we're communicating with Ray from beyond the, the, the neither, you know? The either, you know? We're, she's talking to us like a ghost. Sorry about that. It's okay. Ghost Ray? Yes. Yeah, so uh, she timed out. So basically, to explain, VRChat has this like weird like bug where if you sit in the world for long enough, you get like this timeout thing where it just says like VRChat disconnected or whatever and you have to like rejoin the lobby. But anyway, I guess that answers that question, Dragon. Oh, I have to give you permissions. One second, Ray. Here. There, and you can walk. You can walk over here again. When you switch, when you uh, exit the world, it removes your stage axis. Didn't actually hear the question because I crashed. So you're gonna ahead and ask again. Okay, we'll ask the question again. So, <clears throat> Dragon asked the question, Vray, you known as the comfy queen, the hand ASMR goddess, but inquiring minds want to know we're gonna take that next big step, aka the feet ASMR. Next question? Okay. <clears throat> Next question from Ghastly. For Vray, where do you see yourself around this time next year? An alleyway of a cup? Some really comfy ca cardboard all around me? Oh. Okay. Uh, stranger people, strange people look in the corner looking at me. Yeah, honestly, I have this everything that's happening already is something that is really unbelievable. Okay. I'm not the type of person to really plan ahead very much, just live in the moment. To even consider that is what's happening is pretty much something I could have, I could not fathom. It's just not something I could have imagined happening, and I've noticed that pretty much for most things in life. Uh, that you never really know what can happen if things are constantly changing. Hobo RP? Yeah. If things are constantly changing like that, kind of, just throws things at you with all this up and down, so I typically don't plan really things out. 
really concern myself with the future. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep doing, trying to do, improve, and keep, keep on enjoying what I'm doing. I'm not going to take things for granted. Okay, I understand, I understand. But I have no idea what will be this time. I understand. Uh, even next five years, even next month. All I can say is the plan to continue for as long as I can. Well, I mean, I know your next plan is to get a maid outfit and more swimsuits. So, I mean, that's that. I mean, that. I mean, we got that at least, you know. All well, small ideas, sure. Some outfits, more music, some outlets, some outfits, some other things, some events. Maid Vray. That's what I'm saying, Groovy Tuesday. Listen, bikini Maid Vray is too OP. Even the gods will, will bow down before Vray if they ever saw that. I think Vray just died again when I said that. Vraymore? Play. Oh my god, I'm frozen. It's going to disconnect me. No! Okay. This should be as quick. This one time it should be quick though. I mean, we're going to be wrapping up soon anyway. I don't know if she can still hear me or not, but chat, we're going to be wrapping up the next like 10 minutes anyway. Because this is kind of the end of the interview. She's having issues. VR chat's bugging out. Uh, it's Ray as a Lemur. Rebel. It's, uh, it's here, meme avatar. Oh, okay. Doesn't know about Vraymer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, one sec. I'll give you access again. There. Yes. Well, uh, since you're having issues, we'll kind of speed run through this, all right? It's not, it's just, uh, it's just an old VR chat bug happens, everyone. Any issues or anything? We're good. Okay, I'm just saying in case. Might be too hot to stream. I mean, I'm fine. I'm fine. I got AC blowing. I got, like, the chill decks blowing air directly into my retinas. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty, you know, chilling here. Um... How do I pronounce this? This person's in the chat, so I, I apologize because I can't read because I'm illiterate. But uh, their name is Ikuroth. I think that's how you pronounce that. They said, uh, will Vray ever do any gaming content on her stream? Are you saying that Vray's not a real gamer? My answer to that is so I do on occasion want to do some sort of like small Discord streams. And things like that where I play games. We've done one before. Where Bree. Where we both just played some Project Zomboid. Yo, Project Zomboid is hype as fuck. That game is hardcore. You get bit once, you're fucked. I might do some TFT as far as my stream content goes. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but as far as I stream content goes, I always more or less prioritize VR chat and comfy streams. Dude, Project Zomboid is like, I remember when Moon Moon was streaming for all like the people role playing. That was that was hype as fuck. Holy shit! Because then you have like people betray you and be like, "Give me your car, give me your keys." You're like, "Oh shit!" And then if you die, you have to restart. So it's like hardcore. I was like, "Oh fuck!" And then some people are like, "Uh, I got bit, Jimmy. What's gonna happen to me?" And they're like, "Oh, you know, you just gotta rest." And they wake up and they're a zombie and they're like eating their friend. I'll probably at some point play it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The Project Zomboid is... That's some good-ass content, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Next uh, question we have here from Cringe Vic. Uh, collaborations with Raymer? When? We need more of Raymer. Well, the problem with Raymer is that they seem to avoid me. I still have yet to see them, even one time, never met them. I have no way of contacting them. I couldn't set up a collab, even if I wanted to. I don't know where to find them. Uh, there's just no way for me to contact them if I would. I would if I could. Uh, 
Avoids Ray very well. Damn. It just, it, it, you know, basically what you're trying to say is that if it happens, it happens. Like, if it's like a, the stars align, the, the, the moon outside is red and it's glowing, there's an eclipse, the, the, the Mayans have guessed it in their calendar, you know? That's what I'm going to say is it really happens, it happens. I have a sneaking suspicion that might be a chance that myself and Vramer, uh, you may not be able to be in the same room together. I won't divulge too deeply into that, why that is. I have a sneaking suspicion. I gotcha. That I probably never... Meet? Oh, shit. Okay. Like you'll never see us together in the same room for some weird reason. That was like a paradox thing, you know? There's there's just too many Vrays. People with the name Vray, the, the, the world explodes. Yeah, I understand. Some reason, uh, uh, yeah. So, um, if anybody in the audience, is anyone in the audience here today have any questions? If you do, for Vray or myself, uh, put your, raise your hand. Anybody? Any takers? Nobody? Is anyone in the chat? In the Twitch chat? Because that was from the Google document. Those are questions from a while ago. Any more angry Vrays in my life too? Oh shit. Those are good questions, thank you. Yes, they were excellent questions, 10 out of 10. Any questions? Uh, anyone in the chat specifically? No wrong, you don't need more angry Vray in your life, no one does. Ada, ada. Uh, okay, here are some questions. Wompy Womp says, Yeah, why'd you dance in Gasly's head? Is there a reason? Like, is there a voice that told you to do it? So I was on top of this really high stage, right in front of the DJ, and I needed to get down. I just jumped to the ground. I might hurt myself. So instead, there was this platform that looked very soft and comfy right in front of me. So I, I just jumped down to just a tiny bit right on top of this comfy platform. So yes, it did turn out to be ghastly. Oh, okay. I don't know if that, I didn't know this at the time, but it may have stayed and shuffled and danced a bit on top of his head again. God, I wish I was ghastly. I mean, what? <clears throat> I'm just gonna take a drink. We had another question here. What are the best experiences you've had in VR chat? From uh, Phase Dazzle. Oh, whoops. Click the wrong button there. <clears throat> uh, I'm so bad with favorites and the best, let me think. These questions are so tough for me. Like I said, I've had an amazing time hanging out with my friends on a million different occasions. I cannot measure which one was best or better than the other. I pursue my father usually really likes my time in my campgrounds. Excuse me? Your father? <clears throat> what? I think you meant your friends. And the campgrounds in general, I really enjoy my time in Gator Lobby in general. I don't know why it said that. If I don't uh, have a spe specific moment or anything quite like that, there's uh, too many good moments for me to just pick and choose one over another. It would take a long time for me to get into the mall. I just put it that way I've had many a good times. I'll do it over 7,000 hours. And I've been always active, all of those. I don't really sleep in VR. I don't really... 
Now I've been playing for two years, and I spent those two years the majority of my life in VR. I have 8,000 hours, and I played four and a half years. What the fuck? And you have 7,000 hours? Oh my god, that means you're playing like eight, ten hours a day, Vray. What the hell? How do you almost have more than hours than me? And I played for four and a half years. What the? Just to reiterate that again, without sleeping in VR. Yeah, yeah, I didn't sleep. I don't sleep in VR either. I only get on. Just stream or hang out with the boys. Because a lot of people do sleep in VR and that builds up a lot of hours. But I'll say that a lot of those hours do come from the first year or more so than the second. Yeah, I know some people have like 15,000 hours and they just say, Oh, I sleep in the game. And I'm like, okay, dude, what the hell? Was I, uh, I was like, completely addicted and was in VR every waking moment these days. I mean, the same for me. My first year, I was in the game, oh man, probably 8 to 10 hours a day at least when I had an Oculus Rift. Minimum. Yeah, yeah. And then over time, it kind of like died down to like maybe 4 hours, maybe sometimes 2 hours. That's about it. Depends on what's going on. Can't spell Vray without VR. True. Exactly the same. I mean, lobbies and stream obviously still take up a good, you know, maybe 10 hours a day, roughly. And that's without hanging out with any friends or seeing anyone that's just lobby and stream. I gotcha. I gotcha, I gotcha. So... We're coming up on two hours on this interview. And let me check my timer here. Oh yeah, we're so good. For ads at least. Um So I guess what we'll start doing here is um we'll start wrapping up. You know, it's uh almost ten thirty. It's been almost two hours. And I think we had a good time and I think we gotta end on a high note. You know, I understand that some people are like Sag, ending, feels bad, man. But here's the thing, you can always just watch Ray on the next stream. When's your next stream? In about 10 hours? Okay, well there you go, chat, In about 10 hours. Or just go to twitch.tv slash vrayvray. That's Vray, Vray, Vray twice. So V-R-E-Y, V-R-E-Y. And also you can just go to, oh, I added a P there. No! That's the wrong link. I put P Vrave, right? <laughs> what the fuck? In the Nightbot command. No! Oh. That's my apologies. F. It's just Vave Ray, okay? It's not, just, just delete the P there, okay? Just delete the P. That was a typo. P Vray, yeah. Professional streamer. Yeah, even I'm scuffed, so. Anyway. Point is, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, we had a wonderful time here. I'd like to say thank you so much to Vray for coming on for this interview. Despite, you know, all the minor scuff and all, setting everything up and, 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 you know, eating food and all that stuff, I still had a wonderful time. So thank you so much, Vray. It was a wonderful time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed um, this interview, enjoyed this time. If you haven't already, hit that follow button. I appreciate everybody for following throughout the interview. Thank you so much. Anybody that subscribed or donated or any bits, anything like that, I do appreciate that. And uh, if you don't know, check out Vray. She's going to be streaming about 10 hours, uh, doing some more hand ASMR, get some chill, comfy vibes. Hey, chat, if you get 250k channel points, maybe you can get some uh, hand ASMR personally by Vray in the world. Just saying. So keep watching. And uh, thank you so much, Papa Bless. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Next stream is uh, Friday, in the Undivide, episode 20. It's the epilogue. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, everybody, for being in the audience. Thank you so much to the guy for being the cameraman. Thank you, all my mods. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I love you all. Hit the me with the follow button. Head up, uh, Vray. And uh, take care, everybody. We're going to go raid somebody. Thank you. Mwah. See you guys later.
Uh oh. Uh, I don't know if I can end my stream.